companies who use these products. Greening cleaning services will bring more jobs and business to Dublin contractors. In public offices, government departments, legal offices and health services all across Europe, preferences in tenders will be given to suppliers of paper that is either recycled or from renewable resources. Of greater importance to Dublin printers and their staff, preference will be given to printers who use recycled paper. But Europe doesn't just want greener office equipment made with quieter, recyclable components. It also wants businesses that specialise in the disassembly and recycling of existing appliances that have reached the end of their lives. Europe wants its office equipment to come in recyclable packaging and is looking for companies to supply that packaging. The suppliers of goods, equipment, furniture, vehicles, components, parts and so on will be favoured if they use renewable energy. We have the energy so we can make the goods that Europe wants. We don't need to have factories lying idle in our suburbs because within them we can build the new energy infrastructure that we need. Everyone in Dublin can be part of this Green New Deal. The farmer in Sagart can provide electricity from a turbine on his land to a manufacturer in Talla producing components for Europe's rail network. A horticulturalist in Rush can supply a caterer in Swords with organic produce with which to make meals for our hospitals. This evening, I urge you to stand with me and help me to secure this Green New Deal for Ireland. What else do I stand for as a Green European candidate? Well, because the development model adopted by Europe and North America has been unsustainable, it has allowed company, these economies to continue to emit greenhouse gases that are upsetting the balance of the global climate. It has also caused a rapid depletion of the Earth's non-renewable resources at a rate that means that the needs of the next generation will not be provided for. The European Union needs to radically change its development model for reasons both of necessity and of justice. Climate change will not only threaten the survival of the human species on Earth, but it will leave a majority of the world's population in a state of poverty. By 2100, 180 million people in Africa's poorest countries may have died due to increased disease alone as a result of climate change. If elected to the European Parliament, I will work with my European Green Party colleagues to ensure that the EU continues to provide global leadership on climate change, and particularly in the international negotiations leading up to the Copenhagen summit later this year. As far as the climate change reduction targets of EU member states are concerned, the European Greens will be pushing for a move from what are largely aspirational to legally binding and enforceable targets during the next term of the European Parliament. I, along with my colleagues, will ensure that the EU meets its responsibility in funding mitigation measures for developing countries who are vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. I commit myself to working as an MEP to ensure that the EU's spending on overseas development aid is protected, that this spending becomes more targeted and transparent, and that it is clearly focused on the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals. I will also work to make sure that there's a much greater level of policy coherence between the EU's aid, trade, agriculture and security and defence policies. Along with my colleagues, I will work with the European Parliament to ensure that the concept of human security is the cornerstone of the EU's common foreign and security policy. As far as Ireland's foreign policy is concerned, if elected as MEP, I commit to safeguarding and protecting Ireland's neutrality in the context of the emerging EU security and defence policy. It's clear from the first Lisbon referendum in this country that Irish people are concerned at Ireland's gradual integration into the military and defence structures of the European Union. I believe it is time for Ireland to define its policy of military neutrality in a clear and positive way within the European Union. Any legal guarantees sought by the Irish government in relation to a rerun of the Lisbon Treaty should uphold and protect that positive definition. We must stop being apologetic about our neutrality. As a country that is free from much of the colonial baggage that attaches to other EU member states, Ireland could potentially be a very important asset for the European Union. Our experience of conflict resolution in Northern Ireland could be used to great effect by the EU in situations of international conflict. As a relatively new power on the global stage, the EU has the potential to use its soft power, that is trade, aid and diplomacy, to wield influence internationally, rather than going down the road of becoming a traditional military superpower relying on the use of hard military power. 
As a country representing a very positive model of neutrality, Ireland is well placed to encourage the EU to take issues such as human security, nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament, arms control, diplomacy and conflict resolution more seriously. As a Green MEP in the European Parliament, I will ensure that Ireland's position as a neutral country will be safeguarded and used to the benefit of the EU at an international level. I need to finish soon, but I would like to mention one or two other issues that will be priorities for me if elected to the European Parliament. As an MEP, I promise to lead by example. I will not be boarding what many see as the European gravy train. I will publish details of my European Parliament expenses on my website for each and every year that I'm in office. I also stand for the mandatory, not voluntary, registration of corporate lobbyists in Brussels. Lobbying firms are companies ranging from a single person operation to quite large legal firms who will, for a fee, quote, identify, approach and influence the key decision makers in Europe, end quote, in the words of an advertising material of one prominent lobbying firm. Most lobbyists promise to be able to bend the ears of both MEPs and commissioners. Some claim to have a direct influence on the framing of legislation. Some claim to be able to develop parliamentary questions and all claim to be able to get their paying clients, clients the laws they want. In the EU, lobbying firms are supposed to register, but this is not mandatory. The number of registered lobbying firms is now ballooning, up to 1,203 with a combined budget, staff and presence in Brussels that now comfortably challenges that of the European Parliament itself. That is not good for democracy. 1,200 lobbying firms with an average budget of 50,000 euros each are spending 60 million euros in Brussels each year peddling influence. The levels of transparency surrounding these activities are very unsatisfactory. How is this money spent? We can't allow a situation to continue where citizens believe that their vote is worth less than a lobbyist's euro. As an aspiring MEP, I stand for the mandatory registration of all lobbyists and for a legal obligation on the commissioners, officials and MEPs to disclose which firms have lobbied them and how. Another team that I'm promoting in this campaign is a city that works better for all Dubliners. How often is it that you visit another European city and you're struck by how much easier and more pleasant a place it is to live and to work? Dublin is a great city to live and in and to visit, but it could be so much better for each and every one of us. As a member of the European Party, Green Party, the only truly European-wide uh, party in the European Parliament, when elected, I will be in a position to share with my colleagues the best ideas from across the continent. I will support the bringing of best practice in urban land use and transport planning back to Dublin. I will secure EU financial support for worthwhile projects that will transform Dublin into a much greener, more sustainable city. I will work alongside our very able local Green Dublin representatives to see these green initiatives being implemented. The Green Party has a very talented group of candidates standing in Dublin in June's local elections. As far as I'm concerned, any European campaign that is Dublin-based must be rooted in the experience of local Dublin communities and their representatives. The legislation that's emerging from Europe should be informed by local experience and local concerns. From waste management to water treatment, from energy efficiency to climate change, from good planning to integrated transport systems, and from food production to land use patterns. I intend working very closely with all the Dublin local election candidates, both during my election campaign and after, to ensure that together we make Dublin a healthier, better and more sustainable city for residents and visitors alike. Now I've spoken for a long time, I apologise, but it was an opportunity for me, I suppose, to set out my stall and give you an idea of what I will be standing for as a, a candidate for the European elections in June. I'd like to thank all of the local election candidates, I see a lot of them here in the room this evening for coming along, they're doing great work on the ground, and to be honest, a European candidate doesn't make much sense without local candidates and a local candidate can only do so much without being able to exercise influence at a European level. So I hope people when they're voting on June the 5th will think of us as a package. We need a strong green uh, representation for Dublin. I think we will all like to see uh, Dublin become a much greener, more sustainable city and the kind of job creation potential being brought back uh, from Europe to Dublin so that we can turn things around in this country and so we can create hope and optimism in a time where I think a lot of people are feeling despair and a lack of hope. So I'd like to just finish off maybe by asking you, would you mind watching one of the videos that the very talented team that I 
mentioned to you there have developed for me as part of my uh, European campaign. I'd particularly like to thank Nick Kelly and Rob Carr, who put a huge amount of their own time and work into producing these videos. I think they're a great way of trying to communicate with the electorate at large using the internet and web-based technologies. And I'd like to thank all of the other people as well. I can't name them all this evening who've been involved in helping me and supporting me in putting these videos and this excellent website together. I hope you'll mention the website to your friends and your family and your colleagues and get them to uh, access the website and hopefully to upload their comments and their views because the idea of the website is to give people an opportunity to tell somebody who wants to represent them what they think is important and the kind of issues that they'd like to see promoted uh, in the European Parliament. So I'll ask you just if you have the patience just to watch the videos about three to four minutes long. I think it's worth watching and it gives you a sense I think of the whole issue uh, of how important it is that we democratise the European Union and particularly that we bring the European Parliament closer to people who vote in the European elections.